Last summer, I sat down with three guys who share a passion for miniature wargaming, specifically 40k. They even started a YouTube channel called 40k Amateur Hour. I wanted to get a little bit of their history and find out what makes them like this game so much. So here is a little bit of their story. Hi, my name is James and uh, I play miniature wargaming as a hobby and just got into YouTubing. Who am I? Who am I? That's a good question. Hi, my name is Rico. Hi, I'm Chad with 40K Amateur Hour and a little bit about me and gaming. Hi, I'm Rico and I am one of the 40K Amateur Hour guys that uh, started up a YouTube channel and some other things because we liked our hobby so much that we thought we'd start sharing it with everybody else. Uh, the question is about how did I get started in, in gaming in, a, in the first place? And I would basically say that I was basically eight years old and I had a friend call up and I was really big into reading The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings and those kind of fantasy books. And my friend called up and says, hey, I got, I got this game, you gotta come play. So I says, all right, let's do it. And we went over and he introduced me into Dungeons and Dragons and started playing some role playing games through that aspect and even jumped around with different ones. Uh, played Lord of the Rings, role playing games, played Shadowrun and different, just different types of genres and role playing games. And one of the things that uh, I really liked about it was that it was different than, you know, your, your board games, you're playing Monopoly and, you know, somebody says, well, man, I just love to be able to leave the board and go rob the bank or do something else and you, you just can't because there's specific sets of rules and things that tell you you know that you just have to follow the board around so these games are kind of cool because you could use your imagination you could go where you wanted to and do what you wanted to do and I was really really getting into these types of things and then I went into a gaming store and they had a game that they were playing on the table that uh, was using miniatures and they had terrain and buildings and things like that and the first thing I thought was that would be amazing and awesome to use in, in Dungeons and & Dragons. And so I started collecting and buying miniatures and started building my own terrain and making different things to use in the adventures that we would have in Dungeons and & Dragons. And so I was really enjoying that aspect of it, but then as I started keeping going back to the, this gaming store and this hobby store that I was going to, uh, they had a, a board game that was called Space Hulk. And so I started playing Space Hulk which used a lot of things that are in Warhammer 40k now, and they had Marines and the Terminator Marines and the Gene Steeler Aliens, and I really enjoyed that. I was having fun with it, so I thought, you know, maybe I ought to branch out a little bit further and see about this, and so I went down and started asking a little bit about this Warhammer game. Well, what do you actually do? And they started showing me, well, you know, there's a giant table that's laid out here, and you have terrain set up, you have miniatures, uh, it's kind of strategic, and, and like James, and, and he talked about playing Axis and Allies, and I played Axis and Allies, Risk, uh, Shogun, a lot of different board games, but still you have squares you move into, you have you know limitations on where you can go and, and some, certain things like that, and in this game it was pretty wide open. You chose your own armies, you didn't have to start with what the, the game told you to start with, you were evenly matched because they do a point system, so you know, each army's worth so many points and their army is supposed to be evenly matched with yours and you're marching around this table doing pretty much whatever it is that you want to do. So I started looking into it and I thought, you know, this is actually kind of cool. I've got, I've got a bunch of miniatures, I've got some terrain because I've been using them for other things. So I started building up some armies. Now, you know, there's a lot of different things to choose from and that's one of the cool things about the game is the, the variety of what you can have. There's different races, it's, it's in the future, it's in space, they have a fantasy version as well that has elves and dwarves and things like that. So there's a big variety of what you can choose. And so I, I went with one that was kind of the simplest and basic at the time. And I started with the very first version of Warhammer. It was uh, called Rogue Trader. Uh, it was brand new, pretty fresh out. So I went with the basic Space Marine Army at the time, which were the humans, the elite of the humans, the kind of like the special forces. And so I started building a, a Space Marine Army and then a lot of the people that I hung out with and friends that I had weren't into it and didn't want to buy in the armies and things like that. So I thought, well, if I want anybody to play, then I need to have another one. So I went and found one of the other races and I started building an orc, space orc army. So with my space orc army and my space marine army, I played back and forth through the first couple of, of uh, games that I had with some friends and went to the gaming store a few times and played. 
and just really enjoyed the painting of the models. I'd been doing that for quite some time with the D&D &D models and things that I've been collecting. So painting them and building them and then making the terrain for the battlefield was one of my favorite things. So I just continued to collect, build, and paint these two different armies, the Space Marines and the Space Orcs, and playing back and forth. Then they changed, they revamped the rules, and they went through a, a second edition, and I started playing that. And then really went away from that for a little while and was doing a lot more of the role playing and some of the other stuff. And there was a couple other tabletop games I tried. I went and did some uh, history ones where I would reenact Civil War battles using miniatures and things. And I went, did some fantasy, stuff like that for some time. And once in a while I'd pull out and play the 40K stuff. Well, then I started doing another role playing game, which is based in the 40K universe called Dark Heresy, uh, where you're basically working for what's called the Inquisition at the time for the humans and you're going around and finding heretics and aliens and things of that sort. So I started buying, because I liked using the miniatures and the terrain and things like that, in the role-playing game. So I started buying terrain and miniatures uh, to go with this Dark Heresy game. And as I started realizing that, I was actually collecting more and more bits and pieces for more armies to go with the Warhammer 40K. When the new edition, the sixth edition came out, they had a box set I got one of my neighbors, a friend of mine, Chad, who uh, had played with me a few times, and I thought, well, let's look into it and see what, what it's like since I have this. So we split the box, and I was using the Chaos guys that came in it more for the role-playing game at first, but as I looked at it, I said, wow, I've got almost enough for a Chaos army, so I started building that and jumped back into it. Now I'm seven armies into uh, Warhammer again, uh, playing every week, if not more than that. I uh, got the YouTube and Facebook uh, going. That's our amateur, 40K Amateur Hour uh, going on pretty strong. Pretty excited about it. Uh, well, start of strategy games is pretty much, I would I would assume, like many people, would be chess. And I uh, kind of worked my way up from there. I played chess with my father, and uh, I did chess uh, in high school for the chess club. And then I kind of went on to a, a game called uh, uh, Axes and Allies, which was a World War II uh, strategy kind of game, and I moved on to role-playing games such as uh, BattleTech. Uh, I played a lot of BattleTech when I was you know, as a teenager and young, and uh, kind of messed around a little bit with Dungeons and Dragons. Didn't do a whole lot, and then briefly I got introduced to 40K when I was a teenager, maybe six months, and then uh, and then uh, I graduated, and <laughs> and then I had to get a job and <laughs> get a life, I guess, so to speak, and I kind of dropped all of it. And then I'm um, uh, I'm married now. I have kids, and uh, and I got. Got back into it. My wife gave me a starter set for Christmas, my son and I, and I went down to the local store, kind of painted them up, went down to the local store uh, to see how to play because it had changed so much, and I met uh, met my partners in crime that helped me with the YouTube channel, and, and I've been doing it uh, about a year now and, and loving every second of it. I've always liked gaming all my life. Uh, growing up, my dad was Hard worker, but on the few days that it was raining or we couldn't go outside and work, he really liked playing board games. And two that I remember a lot from my youth was Monopoly and Risk. So I learned to like games at an early age and really wasn't introduced into something a little more edgy until college. In college, I was introduced to uh, Dungeons and Dragons. And thanks to that game, I lost two scholarships and a grant because... We stayed up all night playing D&D &D and not necessarily doing any homework. So that was when I really melded more into some of the uh, other types of games. As over the last 18, 20 years, I haven't played that much, but recently got reintroduced to 40K. My uh, buddy next door, Rico, liked to play it uh, second edition 40K a bit. And about once or twice a year when we had a long weekend, a holiday came up, and we had a lot of time that we could escape from our wives for a day or so, he would set up this massive layout on a board in his, in his dungeon. And uh, he would take one side, and I seemed like I always played orcs, I think because they were pretty simple to play. But I'd show up at his house, he'd hand me a bunch of cards, that told me what my characters did, and I would play the game. Didn't really know what I was doing, didn't really understand the tactics, but... It was a big, board, a big, big board game, and it was really fun, so I continued playing. And then I got into it a little more deeply about a year and a half ago. Rico was looking at getting into one of the hobbies that I'm into. I do medieval combat, where we dress up in full armor and pound on each other. And he was looking at getting into that hobby. And he had spiked my interest in Warhammer 40K, and so we literally ended up just working out a trade, where I helped him put together his first set of armor to go out and 
do what I was doing, and he helped me build my first army to start playing 40K, which initially was playing Dark Angels. Uh, that was when their new box set edition came out, and so they were readily available, cheap and easy to get a hold of, and so that was a good way to build up uh, an army pretty fast. Things that I guess you could say I kind of became a little bit famous for is what we call the dungeon. The dungeon is the room that, uh, at one point it was just down in the basement, but my wife needed some space in that. She was putting a salon in the house. She's a, a hairstylist, and she said, hey, we got to you know, move this space. And so we actually ended up building an entire room. My wife was amazing and awesome to, to support this habit of mine, I guess you could say. Uh, but we built a large room onto the house, basically set for gaming. And it started off that I actually had plenty of room in there uh, and shelf space, but with all the collecting, the miniatures, the painting, the terrain, everything that we have, I've more than filled the dungeon to capacity. Uh, we have weekly games of different sorts of role playing and also uh, tabletop war gaming, uh, board gaming, all sorts of types of things. It's just kind of a great hangout, a wonderful place to be. It's my man cave. I love it. I can run there and escape when I want to paint, uh, put models together and do those types of things for the game. And it's just a great place to have friends. My wife gets involved, we have our neighbors, our friends, they come over and we have just a great time playing. So the dungeons kind of become a great, awesome hangout. That's where we film a lot of our 40K amateur hour things now. Uh, it's wall to wall miniatures and terrain. Uh, it's just, it's my heaven on earth kind of to speak of that. So uh, that's how that came about. Just from all the collecting and needing a place to put it all and having an awesome wife that supports it and, and allowed me to do that. Even other games. What's unique about this stuff, in my opinion, is, 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 is the total aspect of it. You, you go and you buy something like Sorry, for example, a, a Milton Bradley game, and it's got a core set of rules and you got your little figurine guys and that's it, you play the same way. 40K or miniature wargaming, you get your, you get your, your people, your army, and uh, what's nice about it is you get to make it what you want. You get to you cut them up and you, you glue them together how you want and you can modify them and there's infinite amount of tricks out there that you can do. So basically you, it's called converting. And you convert them into whatever you want, you paint them however you want, and then no army plays the same way. And, I, and I'm trying to remember, there's like what, six or seven armies you can play right now currently and uh, each one has a subdivision or you can even take them as allies. And so you can play totally story driven, which they have... I mean, the universe for 40K is, is enormous. It's, they've got books and novels and stuff. They've been doing it for years. You can play what's called fluff-wise, which is just the story stuff, or you can play competitive. It's up to you, or a little bit mixture of in-between. So that's why I like this one. Gaming. 40K in particular I like because it's a board game. It has rules, but it's not hardcore rules like Monopoly or Risk, where you can only do this or this. Uh, I think that's sort of kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum from, let's say, D&D, &D, where a lot of it's just in your mind, it's not necessarily on the board, or it's really loose-ended rules. This is somewhere in the middle where you have some rules to play by, but it's like a game of chess where you get to pick your own pieces. And I was really, really found a lot of appeal in the fact that I got to play an army, but I got to choose how to compose that army. And that put a lot more of the mental into it. And rather than it just being about the dice rolls and who got lucky, it was a lot more about what I chose to do. How many pieces do I have in, is a good question. Um, people ask me that all the time when they see the walls, uh, just shelves of miniatures just lined up through the whole thing. I started counting. I actually have two whole walls of just straight miniatures and the rest are terrain and other things. And there's about five shelves stacked among that. And I got about halfway on the first wall on about three shelves and I was at 3,000 and I just got tired of counting. So if you take that section and you move it across, uh, that'd be probably easily about 15 to 20,000 miniatures. All pretty much hand painted and put together by me. Uh, my first army, I went with the Dark Angels, and they're, uh, they're not total destruction. They don't uh, table people at all, at least that I've seen. Uh, so I went with a fluff with them. I like the way they are, I like what they do. Uh, but now that I've got the Chaos Space Marines, they tend to be a little bit more aggressive in the tournament kind of level. They're not the end all, it is all, but they're a lot more cheesy, so to speak, and so I'm kind of building them up to, uh, to really hurt, put some hurt on some people this year, especially in Valhalla. Okay. What is I really think this kind of gaming is important because it lets you get outside the box, and a lot of people stereotypically frown on it because they don't understand it, but I really think it's an important kind of gaming because you are released from the 
nuances of just petty rules and random luck and allowed to use your brain in bigger and better ways. So I think it's a really good kind of gaming, an important kind of gaming, and something I think more people should try because it's a whole lot of fun. You know, I think my passion for the game is is I've got two. I've, I love the painting. A lot of people don't like painting. Uh, there's gamers out there that like converting but don't like painting. There's guys that like uh, uh, painting and not converting. And then there's people who just don't like anything but to play. Um, I like to convert, but not as much as I like to, to paint. And, and when I do convert, it's not so much to destroy somebody. It's more of like scenic, like bases and, you know, them... Uh, more of a picture, like a diorama kind of a thing, and I really like to paint. I've really gotten into that. I, I kind of think I'm halfway decent at it. But uh, and then I like to take an army that nobody likes or they discount. They say, ah, this is garbage, and uh, try to figure out how it makes it work. And I'll give you a great example. Um, I, I went out with my friends uh, that, that the local gaming club. These guys that I started YouTube up, and, and they were. I was asking them advice. Been there a couple months, and I was asking them advice and starting to build up the Dark Angels. And I says, what do you guys think about this model called the Dreadnought? I really liked them. I loved the way they looked. I uh, kind of like their fluff, and they both went, yeah, they're okay, but yeah, we wouldn't, we wouldn't waste the money. Well, unfortunately, I'd already had one on eBay on the way, and I was like thinking to myself, oh, crap, I've, I've bought a model that's, that's garbage. To this day, when you ask him, you'll have to ask Rico about Brother, Brother Simon. It's one of the best purchases I've ever had, because it just, it works phenomenal. And I think there's a little bit of mystique about this game. Some things work for you and doesn't work for the other, and the way the dice rolls and things like that. But uh, I, I love my Dreadnoughts, and, and they work awesome. And so not many people play with those things. And, and so I like to take something that doesn't work and figure out a way to make it work. There's a lot of, a lot of people will say things are broken or it's cheese. Yes and no, it's just make something, make your own cheese. Make, up, make something that you think that you can make that nobody else has done. That's, that's what I like. So painting and then figuring out a way to, to put the hurt on somebody with something that they don't think is actually going to do it to you. What do I say the future of this? For me, it's a hobby and I'm having a great time. Uh, we started the YouTube channel, the Facebook, just because we wanted to share it. And I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, making money or, you know, doing something like that, it's not even, that's so far back in my mind. I think we made like $5, which, you know, is like, woo! Uh, but, no, honestly, what I, what I think the coolest is when I saw that somebody clear over in, you know, Australia or somewhere in Europe and... Czechoslovakia or something has seen what we're doing made a comment and said hey that was a really cool idea I'm gonna do that or ah, man I'm glad you guys shared that because that's really cool or fun and, and stuff like that just it's a hobby and that's what the cool thing is when you run into people that share the same hobby have the same types of things and you can share those ideas uh, you know that's one of the things I wouldn't even know have got to know James he walked into a store and said hey I got this game I'm trying to figure out to play Chad and I said well sit down let's play and from there our friendship took off and bloomed. I mean, that's the kind of thing that we're looking for. It's like, you know, hey, if we can share it, if we can have a good time, if you enjoy what we're doing, that's what we're in it and doing it for. And it's a hobby and it's fun. When it's not fun, we'll quit doing it. Hi! Photo bomb. <laughs> that's my new... Hi, I'm a middle-aged war gamer. <laughs> I am married. I have children. I have head sex. <laughs> No, it's, what, was what is geeks? a nerd versus geeks? Because geeks. geeks are nerds that have been laid, nerds right? Are no. <laughs> nerds, nerds are okay. All right, Mike, go ahead and introduce yourself. How you would like to introduce All right. yourself? All right. Hello. <laughs> Great! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. Now I can't do it. <laughs> Faith in the glory. Good for now. <laughs> I need a drink now. <laughs> My mouth is watering.